Welcome back. We are answering your questions about the coronavirus with Wesley Long Hospital's Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Jeffrey Hatcher. Remember, you can text your questions. The number is at the bottom of the screen, 336-379-5775. Already in the queue, we have, I'm not 65 and older, but I am able to put myself on a vaccine appointment wait list now. So when am I able to actually get one of the vaccines? Yeah, that's a great question. And that's a lot of people's questions. We don't, we don't know that. So some of that's determined by how much vaccine we have. And some of it is determined by when you'll fall into the criteria as determined by the CDC. And that is something that it seems like every single day there is new information that comes down. So that is something that is ever changing. Yeah. So and there's no they don't have a strict schedule that they have set as far as when those criteria will change. Mm -hmm. This question is, are vaccines that have already been distributed helping reduce the number of cases and hospitalizations? We think that they are. They're probably not the biggest factor right now. Right now, the biggest factor are our three W's. And then again, the sort of better job that we're doing about social distancing than we had been doing over the late fall period. Mm -hmm. And again, you said that because we haven't had some big group setting, except mm -hmm. for of course, like Super Bowl, some people did that. It hasn't been like a Thanksgiving or a Christmas where people would get together. Exactly right. Uh, so this person says, do the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines protect against the new variant? So we, we do believe that they do. There is good evidence of that. Um, the Pfizer did a really neat study where they took some some sera from people who've been vaccinated and applied it to some of these new variants in a lab and show that they had great efficacy against it. So we believe that they do. Uh, this is a follow up on the conversation that we had in the first segment. This person says, should we all be doubling up on masks when we need to go out? But I'm not sure that that's what the CDC is recommending right now. If you feel more comfortable that having a double mask on, then that's fine. But again, it's, it's not what the recommendation from the CDC at this point. Mm -hmm. And then a follow up to that. This person says I wear cloth masks and I wash them often. If I keep washing them, am I still OK to keep wearing them or should I toss them after a certain amount of time? Yeah, that's the, that's the trick with um, all of us making our own masks is that there's no standard around that. So we don't know how many times you could wash it and it would still be effective or if it was even ever effective. So when you're looking for a, a standard and an answer to a standard like that, it's really better to use something that has been standardized, such as uh, a medical grade mask. Mm -hmm. And you also mentioned that if you do have one of those cloth masks that allows you to put the filter in there, that mm -hmm. we should be doing that. Yeah, that's another way to increase the efficacy if you're using a cloth mask. Okay, this person is saying, has Cone had any hospitalizations or deaths linked to a COVID variant? We're not aware of that. We don't believe that we have, but again, since we're not uh, doing testing for variants or that testing is being done on a very limited basis by the county and the state, we've not been away, made aware that that has occurred in our health system. Mm -hmm. This is a very uh, popular question. People um, are asking this. Can you take Tylenol after you have had the vaccine? And maybe we even need to back up and say, should you be taking Tylenol before the vaccine? And what is the issue with all of that? Yeah, so, so part of what happens when you get the vaccine is it simulates you getting the infection. So your immune system is reacting and that's exactly what you want to happen. So taking something like Tylenol or Motrin after you've had the vaccine is absolutely fine. But what about people who say, well, I want to take some Tylenol or something before I get the vaccine so it wards off when my arm is going to hurt? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's probably OK. It might be better to let your immune system have that little boost and get get excited first before you before you try to calm it down with an anti-inflammatory like Tylenol or uh, ibuprofen or or Tylenol. So it might be better to wait. Mm -hmm. uh, this question is, will doctor's offices ever get the vaccines to give out? I believe they will. I think at this point we have such a limited supply and also are doing it based on such stringent criteria to make sure that we're giving it to the people who need it the most. Um, it's we're not quite to that point yet, but I think that it will become much more common and much more available in the future. Mm -hmm. This question is about blood type. Does blood type influence the impact of being exposed to COVID-19? So we don't have data to support that. That's been something that's bounced around since the beginning of the epidemic, but we don't have any data that suggests that. Mm -hmm. This person says, if I have already had COVID and have recovered, uh, how concerned should I be about catching one of these new variant strains? 
Right, so that's a that's a great question. As far as the Brazil strain and the UK strain, we don't have evidence that that's happening. There is some concerning evidence about the South African strain that that has been happening. So at this point, um, in the United States, we don't have evidence of widespread uh, widespread occurrence of the South African strain. So at this point, I wouldn't be too worried about it. Mm -hmm. Of course, again, all of that could change as we get through this rest of this year. Uh, this question is, how are people being monitored for that 15 to 30 minutes after taking the vaccine? What does that entail, if you can describe it for them? Oh, oh you'll probably, if you're getting your vaccine at the Coliseum, you're going to just sit there and, and be monitored by the nursing staff or the staff who's there just to make sure that, um, most concernedly, that you wouldn't start getting short of breath or having trouble uh, with the uh, swelling of your tongue or if you start to have a rash. and, and Really, itching is probably the thing that we've heard the most of. So it's not like you're hooked up to any kind of apparatus or breathing machine or yeah. anything like that, that they would be no. monitoring your heartbeat or anything? No, no okay. nobody's going to put you on an oximeter or a heart rate monitor or anything like that. Okay, that is good to know. So that answers any more of your questions that you might have about that. All right, this person is asking, is the first vaccine shot and the second vaccine shot the same shots? Yes. It's actually, it's exactly the same. There's, there's nothing different about it. It's been an interesting thing that uh, some other countries are doing, which is taking, a, shifting as many vaccines as possible into their first, first dose, thinking that if you're immunizing more people with this first dose, that you actually will save more lives than trying to give people the first and second dose. Hmm, okay, but that is not what we are doing here. No, it's not. Okay, just right. want to make right that now, very clear. Yeah, we're not doing that right now. And part of that is there's a difference in opinion as to how much you can space out the first and second dose. So in the UK, they're saying we're going to space these out even up to 10 weeks in order to give as many people the first dose as possible. In the US, we're being a little more skeptical about what is a reasonable t amount of time that you can space out between that first and second dose and still get good efficacy of the vaccine. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to continue to take your text questions. We've got one more segment left. We'll be right back in just a few moments.